Well, I find it odd. I mean, I, I get into uh, debates every once in a while with um, uh, with certain drugs. I'll just use an example, statins, for instance. Um, and, you know, Jan and I, I'm speaking for her, but Jan and I just, we, we, you know, we're two pharmacists. We don't believe in statins. Um, and, I mean, cardiologists just love them. And, you know, the gold standard is statins, you know, if your cholesterol is over 200 or, or whatever, um, but you don't look at the overall picture of the whole patient. And functional medicine, you dive in deep and you find out what all's going on. Well, I know when I've talked to cardiologists and I'll, you know, they say, well, the, the studies do show that statins decrease mortality. And I just don't know if I buy that. I mean, um, first of all, you can manipulate data. Um, also, you know, absolute risk versus relative risk. But what's, you know, you're telling me Mr. Cardiologist, that you know, you can have a patient that's 150 pounds overweight that has a horrible diet, horrible diet, horrible lifestyle, isn't sleeping, um, you know, doesn't move, and you're going to give them a statin and you're going to increase their mortality. I'm not buying it, right? You know, and then you tell them that lifestyle changes are important and they say, well, that's not what the studies show. The studies show that, that you know, statin is the most important. It's like, Seriously, it's like, how do you explain that to somebody? I mean, how do you get that through their mind that, you know, pharmaceuticals are not the answer? Mm -hmm. Right. And that comes to a lot of um, education and and the psychological state of people and um, giving them the tools and different information, I guess, that they can kind of take charge of their own health. Uh, I give the same talk to patients about bioidentical hormones and, you know, the data from the you know, Women's Health Initiative and different, you know, true risks versus, you know, but also being able to provide really great things, you know, obviously with um, hormone replacement, you know, so it's it's uh it's difficult because you're up against very big messages and yeah. studies and um yeah just kind of that push of an education and information so it's really giving people you know a bigger point of view and perspective but i just find and i'm lucky that you know people often are searching for an alternative approach. And so I'm able to really work with them on that. And there are, you know, some providers that are definitely more open-minded than others. Um, But we can all agree that, and it might not show up in like medicine treatment, but that lifestyle is so important and it's really the foundation of health. So what are your thoughts when a healthcare professional says, Oh, patients don't want to change their lifestyle. They just want to take a medication and and then that'll then they'll be fine. What are your what are your what's your response to that? I, there's no one size fits all. It just there and there's and it's really digging deeper. You know, I really found even with the functional medicine approach, you know, you could have every nutrition supplement protocol in the world, but it, there, there is that mind body piece to it and connecting with people at a certain level to, to initiate change and find that, that reason for change, I think is definitely an art that is needed in holistic and conventional care because stress is so such a big part of our culture um you know the quick fix is a big part of our culture comforts you know we're learning now longevity you know sauna cold therapy fasting you know like all these extreme things are making us better because we're used to being in you know heat and air conditioning and eating, you know, having food access, a lot of people. Um, And so being able to push people outside their comfort zones and really create a balance to feel better. 